hadn't really thought much about the way that living in the Midwest has affected the printmaking that I make. But when you consider that folks like Lazansky and that whole school come from direct in the middle of the Midwest, and I'm a second generation Lazansky student, you just see the influence that that has on printmaking in general and around the country. It, you can kind of see it as the core of printmaking and the root of everything we're doing now. I'm Sid Chaffetz. I, I was born in Providence of Russian Jewish immigrants. I'm always interested in art, although I didn't know what art was. I always loved drawing. I went to RISD. In my second year, I was drafted into the Army, and my combat experience was in the Battle of the Bulge. My first uh, involvement with the arts came at the University of Colorado and um, right out, out of high school. I spent a year there as a freshman and then was drafted for military service. Spent three years in World War II and at the end of that I was one of the thousands of GIs who came back to colleges and university campuses in the fall of 1946. When I got out of the Army, the GI Bill was in force, and I was fortunate in that I had survived. I, immediate, I immediately headed to New York City and was going to become a famous artist. This was winter 1945. New York City was crowded and dirty and cold. And I used to visit the famous artists of the day. And I was told by one of them, kid, you're stupid. Go back to school. You have the government paying your bills. Give it a couple of years. So I went back to school. Now, the year that I had at Colorado before I went to service, it had dress codes for women. Uh, the buildings were closed at five o'clock at night, so everything stopped in the sense of if you wanted to read or go in and make prints or paint, uh, creativity stopped at five o'clock. When we came back, we changed every single bit of that. But it didn't only change it in peripheral matters. What really mattered was what happened in the classrooms. These GIs were committed. I mean, going to school was nothing compared to what we had done. And nothing terrified us. Tests, encounters with professors, and we weren't bullies, you know, don't get me wrong, but we, we had had three, four, five years, maybe some of these people more, of a very intense experience. And it changed the whole tenor. Uh, Greek organizations in those days were dead. We didn't care who was homecoming queen. None of that mattered. It was so irrelevant. Our business was to come back to school to prepare ourselves for a professional life. The GI Bill afforded me to study with Hayter in Europe. And it was from Paris that I got my job at Ohio State. Ohio State and Yale were, were the only two institutions that had veritable studio programs, not merely art education or art survey or art history programs. I had never been to the Midwest and I was welcomed by the faculty I looked forward to the idea of, of a big university to becoming part of a place where everyone was dedicated to seeking truth and beauty. William Stanley Hayter came to Ohio State, a visiting artist. If you take that pen and you make a rapid movement in this direction, and you come back slowly, this direction. The rapid movement will be black 
and the slow movement will be white. In other words, you have the means of drawing, as it were, through the space like this, from black line to a white line, to a black line to a white line again. And uh, to handle it properly is quite a problem of manipulation. Perhaps not as difficult. Although Hayter was, was a great printmaker, he uh, thought of himself uh, primarily as a painter, and he always felt that there was too much emphasis on his prints and not enough on his paintings. Printmaking before this period of time was at very best minimal activity within a, a department. The major things were painting and sculpture. For instance, in the area of silk screen, that was always with home economics for some strange reason. No one in this country was making prints on the scale and the complexity and involvement that Mauricio brought to this country and introduced to students uh, and others at the University of Iowa. It was just unheard of. He wanted to make prints that would rival painting and sculpture. He said he did not want to hear any more the idea that printmaking was a minor art. It took a man like Lazansky to change all of that, but in addition to Lazansky, you have to have other people at an institution that understand what it will do in terms of the curriculum. In fact, there were four people at that particular time. All of them were chair people in the Midwest. We had Longman at, at Iowa. We had Alden McGrew at Colorado. We had Harvard Arneson at Minnesota. And we had Dr. Henry Hope here at Indiana University. Those four men were pivotal in the Master of Fine Arts degree. That did not exist before. So the, the MFA as they designed it was a mixture of the strength in studio and of strong knowledge of art history. In the Midwest, it's a place where all the ideas get thrown around. You know, it comes in from the East Coast, it comes back from the West Coast. We are the place where the good stuff comes to the top. You know, we draw the best ideas from either side of the country and use them as our own. And in a lot of ways, find new ways of going about approaching them. I don't think there's been any schools either on the West Coast or the East Coast that could rival what we've done in the Midwest.